but there's been a rumour for a long time we'll exchange you SQL and um, when I said to Akkad, I actually asked people, I said the Microsoft guy, they've got it running on SQL internally. Okay. They've got it running on SQL internally for testing and they haven't found one situation where it's been outperformed ESE. Right. So ESE is a pretty good database apparently. So that's LCR anyway, so um, yeah, for poor people. Yeah. <laughs> so CCR, Cluster Continuous Replication, that's, that's a nicer one to do. Yeah. And the great thing about that is it, it provides a unified name because it uses the clustering service so your clients aren't too worried if one of them does fail over. You do also have a single copy cluster, which is rubbish. It's one we used to do in Exchange 2003 where you used to basically have a shared storage. So we both used to use shared storage. Okay. But of course that shared storage costs some money. And with this one, CCR, we can just use local disks. We don't need anything special for that. And this one, SCR, is the standby continuous replication. This is useful for offsite DR. So we're using CCR, let's say we are still replicating CCR, but if we lose the entire site, because we're right near an airport, as you might hear, um, <laughs> <laughs> if we lose the entire site, that's going to be no good. So what SCR can do is that can replicate across to an offsite location and it can replay the transactions at a later on point. Okay. Okay, so. Why call it? So it's actually a different step to install SCR than CCR? Because I would just imagine SCR is CCR, but with a server that's not on location. You would expect, yeah. Okay. That, that they weren't. Basically, SCR okay. came about, I think, in Service Pack 1 in 2007. They both do involve. I think that we have been finding they are reasonably complex to set up. And people don't realise that recovering from SCR is actually tricky. Right. Recovering from CCR is no problem at all, but SCR is a little bit trickier. Okay. Um, so if, if this site goes down, then is the manual failover to the next? If this entire site goes yeah. down, yes, it because will be. Because of the airport? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. It will be. But again, with DR, most of the time there are some manual steps in DR, okay. so as long as they're right. written down somewhere, on the post-it note, under the keyboard or something. So could you then have CCR within this site, and then replicate it using SCR to absolutely yeah okay. no problem at all yeah you can do that and that's a fairly typical design okay and um, so yeah I can design it already absolutely give me Visio and you could design it already but you don't need to do any of that anymore <laughs> oh <laughs> just wasted my time but the thing is this, they were so complex so what, what they've decided to do is say well forget about all that and now what you do have is database access groups now there were there were some issues having LCR and CCR because if we were participating like I just said in LCR or CCR we couldn't host client access roles, we couldn't host hub transport roles, which meant for a high availability exchange 2000 solution, you were offering down to, you were offering down to four servers, right. you know, two for the mailboxes, and hub and CAS will load balance somehow. CAS is? Client access. Oh, right. Yes. Client access server. Yeah, throughout the web access, your phones, or something you missed out on. So, uh, yeah, DAGs are the future now, and the nice thing about uh, this thing, data access groups, I think they're data access groups, well, they are for this podcast. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's, DAGs, just call them DAGs. <laughs> Absolutely. DAGs, yeah. So I think that's an Australian thing, isn't it? What, dingoes? No, no, DAGs are, uh, it's... <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's a scumbag word, basically. It's a, it's, so I'm trying to think of the right word, but I'll carry on. Right, so, yeah, DAGs are the future data access groups. And the nice thing here is they're done on the database level. So now what you can have is, like, let's say, I've got a single exchange server here, a nice single exchange server, and I've got the, the management mailbox on it, and I'm deciding, you know, that management mailbox is really, really important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replicate that database off, so I create a data access group. Okay. And it's as simple as that. Don't have to worry about setting up clustering, because it's done all for you. It's all done part of the wizard. So again, I just don't know what these exchange consultants are going to be doing. I really don't. But literally with these DAGs, it is straightforward. Um, there's, like you've kind of suspected, LCR or CCR and SCR, they're merged back together now. So all I would say is I want a DAG of this, this uh, mailbox and I want it to be on that server, that server, and that server over there. And can you replay the logs an hour afterwards on that server over there? Okay. And it's that straightforward. Now it's really interesting what Microsoft have said about DAGs and they're really saying, you know, when you start and look at the future of, of Exchange 2010, you can have up to 16 copies of each database. Okay, 16 copies, that's quite a lot. Yeah. And they're saying, if you maintain three copies, and I'm not saying I agree with this yet, because this seems really strange, they're saying, you don't need to back up. Why would you back up? Well, if they're not on the same site, then... Because it's sort of like a non-line backup all yeah. the time, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 
Of course, there are other reasons to want to do a backup. And well, because like you might want to restore to a point in time if you corrupt, for example, uh, virus. A virus. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, if you've got a virus and you want to do a point in time recovery, yeah, that's that's one reason. Perhaps, but that's what your dad gave on that side. That's got a slower replay, so that's right. replaying six hours in the past. Okay. Six hours later, so that's one reason. But of course, the other reason you often do restores is because you've got a, let's face it, a stupid user uh, often in a. Oh, deletes. What type of department do they work in? <laughs> no comment. There? Shall I not go there? No, no, no. No, let's not go there. Anyway, but in, <laughs> in particular departments, when they're not so savvy with email, you know, and they say, I've sent that email. Or I've deleted that email and I've just and it's got users accidentally deleting emails. Yeah. But of course you've got yeah. deleted item retention for that. Right. So with yeah, exchange. Yeah, but you can do shift delete and it's gone. Gone, gone. That's still retained in exchange. Can you do shift delete and go? Yeah. And that gets around. I, I didn't that know. Shift delete just doesn't even go into the trash. It just gets permanently deleted. Or glue up their shift key or something. Uh, I, I don't know that this there's you can only protect certain users can't you and if users are going to shift delete it is their bloody full one so yeah but it happens and they still want to restore it, it I, yeah so no I'm not happy about that one because I can't think of a scenario that we deal with that DPM data protection manager yeah that's what you want. exactly Governor with data well, I, I don't know anything about this exchange uh, retention because it might still retain it on exchange. It, it might well do as well. I don't, I don't know. Perhaps, delete, yeah. perhaps it's something we can try out when we get the thing up and running. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, Exchange 2010, some of the big improvements they made on 2010 is around storage. Now, when you looked at Exchange, um, particularly things like Exchange 5.5, some of the, the issues you had with it was the amount of disk pressure it used to do. Now we've alleviated that to a certain amount in 2007, mainly because we could put more memory in the machine, that's why they're 64 bit. Um, but now what they've done is, and I don't know how they've done it, but they've made lots of improvements on the IO storage and they're, they're sort of waving around really high figures, like they're reducing IO by 70%. And they're saying, well, with this in mind, and again, this, it's such a new product and I haven't got any implementation experience on this, so I'm just going on what I'm reading. They're literally saying, you don't need SANS anymore. Why would you buy a SAN? It's a lot of money for that. You don't, you don't need a SAN. You don't need the performance for that. And they're saying, well, you can just use local disks. Yeah. And they don't even have to be SAS disks. They're going to be SATA disks. And you know what? You know, they're saying it's so, so cheap. And because of all this, because you're saving so much money yeah. on your disk storage, then you can increase your deleted item retention time. So you can say you delete and re retain your items for two months. You know, so I can sort of see what they're doing. The other thing that's worth mentioning is they have now included something called an exchange archive. Do you know we use Xantas or we used to use Xantas or I don't know what we EAS. use now, EAS. Yeah. Well, you don't need those products anymore because exchange does it for you out of the box. Okay. And this is where people say, yeah, right, he hasn't done much reading, has he? Yeah, it is very limited and you probably will be using those products, certainly in this version, because the way the exchange archive mailbox works is it lives on the same server as the exchange user, and lots of people consider the archive should be elsewhere on the cheaper storage. Microsoft's argument for that is, why would it be over there on cheaper storage? Because it can be over here on cheaper storage, because you don't need expensive storage. Right. Now. So you can see they've always got little arguments about it. So um, yeah, the storage improvements increased by 70% from Exchange 2007, or reduced by 70%, reduced by 90% from Exchange 2003. That's it. So IO requirements are lowered, which makes it a perfect candidate for virtualization. Um, RAID options down on here, totally up to you what you decide to choose with RAID. Again, Microsoft is sort of hinting, and as, as I said, I'm not sure if I agree with this as yet, but if you are replicating your database three or four times, why, why would you need to RAID it? You know, it, it's, it's secure anyway. I would say because it's, it's quite cheap. So you said that when it was when it's replicated to another DAG, whatever you said that it's six hours. Oh no! What I'm saying, you can you can limit it. You can say okay. between obviously the DAG between us two. I could say I, I want this to be consistent, so right, I want this to be live and okay. pretty much bang up to date. But for DR, let's replay okay. after six hours. Well, that's quite funky. And that's for the virus thing. I don't know. That's, that's for your scenario. <laughs> <laughs> your okay, so that's